robocalls hit record highs in the U.S. before the pandemic. Tonight, we're telling you how you can help stop those calls. Our, our mantra here is be safe, be kind, wear a mask. In Washington, if you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. But today, many businesses say they still will require everyone to wear one. Vaccinated sections at large venues are becoming more and more popular. And just yesterday, the governor changed the rules to allow them to become bigger and less restricted. The warm weather has arrived and it's sticking around through the weekend. And then I'm tracking rain in your forecast next. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 6. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone, I'm Whitney Ward. Well, after yesterday's landmark announcement from Governor Jay Inslee, we're breaking down tonight all the details you need to know about reopening in Washington as well as mask requirements. So first, we know that Washington is on track to potentially reopen by June 30th. Governor Inslee announced a decline in COVID-19 activity, put the state in a position to reopen. According to data from the State Department of Health, hospitalizations have declined since reaching a peak on April 27th. Inslee also announced that all counties in Washington will now move to or stay in phase three starting on Tuesday. If you're vaccinated, you're um, safe and protected from uh, getting COVID-19 and you really um, have a very low risk of transmitting to other people. That brings us to the next topic. Washington State is following CDC guidelines and lifting its mask mandate for people who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. However, businesses can still require customers to wear masks if they choose. The CDC has also listed several exemptions, including public transportation, airports and hospitals. People are fully or considered fully vaccinated rather two weeks after receiving that second dose of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or two weeks after that single shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And vaccinated sections at large venues are becoming more popular. Yesterday, the governor changed the rules to allow them to become even bigger with fewer restrictions. So how exactly are these sections going to work? Our political reporter Casey Decker is here now to answer some of those key questions. Hi, Casey. Hey, Whitney, Mark. Well, first, let's just break down what exactly is allowed in these types of sections. These are portions of stadiums or arenas where more or less it's like life is back to normal. These sections can be filled to 100% capacity with no distancing required, meaning you actually can sit right next to strangers. And as of yesterday, masks are no longer required in the fully vaccinated sections. Meanwhile, any portion of the stadium or arena where people who aren't fully vaccinated are allowed, those still have to follow the phase requirements. Starting Tuesday, the entire state will be in phase three. That means 25% capacity in outdoor stadiums with a maximum of 9,000 unvaccinated people or 50 50% capacity in indoor arenas with a maximum of 1,000 unvaccinated people. Groups must be six feet apart and everyone must be wearing masks. So clearly some benefit here to being in a vaxxed section. The question is, of course, who's allowed in? If you're 16 years or older, you must be fully vaccinated to get in. That means it's been two weeks since you got your final dose. For adults, there are no exceptions to this. Either you're fully vaxxed or you go into the unvaxxed section. So what about kids then? Well, kids ages 12 to 15 now have two options. One, they can get in if they are fully vaccinated now that they're eligible for the shot. Or two, they can get in even if they aren't vaccinated if they have tested negative for COVID in the past three days. Children ages 5 to 11 only have one way to get in since they're not vaccine eligible yet, and that's a negative test. And children under the age of five can get in regardless, no vax or test required, as long as the adult they're with is fully vaccinated. All right, the next question, of course, how do people know you're fully vaccinated? Well, the governor's office has outlined a list of acceptable forms of proof. One, of course, is your actual vax card. Two, you could take a photo of the card and print it out if you're into that. Three, you could just show a photo of your card on your phone. Or four, you can show paper or digital records you got from your health care provider or downloaded from the state database. Now, some places around the country, you know, have created more advanced vaccine passports that are basically just harder to theoretically fake. But Governor Inslee has been pretty consistent in saying the state has no intention of creating or requiring anything like that here in Washington. Though, if individual businesses want to require more advanced proof, that's their prerogative. Whitney, Mark. All right, Casey, thank you very much. Getting fully vaccinated certainly has its perks, but faking vaccine cards has serious consequences. With the CDC and the governor announcing restrictions are easing for people who are fully vaccinated, officials are worried about fake vaccine cards. The FBI says 
owning and distributing them is a serious offense. So this is actually a federal crime. It's, it's called misuse of a government seal. And um, it comes with potential prison time and or fines. So Governor Inslee says the state right now has no plans to make people prove they have been vaccinated. All right, we are in for a weekend of summer like weather. Tom Sherry is on his way outside where we know that we could be seeing temperatures in the upper 80s. If we can just take a look at the Lake Coeur d'Alene right now because it is certainly beautiful and you can see plenty of people excited that it is indeed Friday uh, right now and so many people looking forward to what looks like is going to be a pretty amazing weekend. Tom Sherry, what do we need to know? Well, I think you just said it all right there. What a beautiful shot of Lake Coeur d'Alene. I'm out here in the backyard. A few fair weather cumulus clouds, but mostly it's blue sky, sunshine, and you probably can't hear them, but the birds are singing. Uh, and I was just a few moments ago. 75 degrees, that's the current temperature on your Friday. It is absolutely beautiful out here. As you, again, you look at the Lake Coeur d'Alene, we talk about the radar, and you can see we've got no rain happening in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Some showers down in the Blue Mountains, a little bit over Montana and north central Idaho, but here in Washington and the inland northwest, it is dry. We'll look for a high tomorrow of 81 degrees. 83 expected on Sunday. This is summer-like weather, and quite frankly, this is coming a little too early. So I'm happy to show you in my 10-day forecast, rain on the way by the middle part of next week and much cooler weather. In the meantime, we will enjoy this this weekend. I'll have your 10-day outlook coming up in a few minutes. Absolutely, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, here's a question. Should Canadians be able to cross the border to get vaccinated? The fire chief of a small community in Point Roberts, Washington, says the Whatcom County Health Department is advising clinics to turn people away from north of the border in what he calls a discriminatory act. Chris Daniels from our Seattle sister station learned this all centers around supply and demand. Living on the 49th parallel gives Christopher Carlton a unique view. I think Canadians should have the right to come across and uh, get vaccinated here. That's why the Point Roberts, Washington fire chief made the offer with most of his population vaccinated to extend a hand to his northern neighbors and perhaps turn the point into some sort of a Cascadia clinic. But in an email yesterday, the county's health department told providers they are not required to vaccinate Canadians and should not advertise or promote it. And Canadians may be turned away. It was reprehensible to mention specific nationality uh, becomes a discriminatory prejudice act at that point. With long lines in neighboring British Columbia and only 3% of Canada fully immunized, vaccine tourism has soared, especially at the northern border, with people flying in, even with the threat of quarantine, just to get a dose. The state's Department of Health signaled earlier this week. Anyone who has not been vaccinated yet and is eligible can get a vaccine in Washington, regardless of where they live. We have more vaccine than participants. Carlton says he believes the mutual aid could be one step towards fully reopening an important trade and tourism corridor, which has for the most part been closed throughout Whatcom County for more than a year. I think Canadians should have the right to come across and uh, get vaccinated here. That is not uh, the direction we should be going as allies and uh, the reliance that we have on each other as a country and the close relationship uh, that we've had for decades and centuries. So in a statement, the county health department said it is not in a position to be a primary vaccination option for Canadians. Exemptions for cross-border vaccinations have already occurred in states like Montana and North Dakota. Still to come tonight, robocalls hit record highs last year. When we return after the break, some tried and true things you can do tonight to crack down on unwanted robocalls.